Welcome, Hordlings, to another Game Hoarder production. Play it cool. Just kidding. It's a let's try. It's not really a production at all. We're going to be trying out Endless Legend off of Steam. The random letter generated was obviously E, and the number was four. Unfortunately, the first four games I of... I many things. Oh. I'm gonna shut up. I have been many things. Warm and green. Cold and gray. Devastated and dying. Now I am alive again. But I fear my new children imitate the old ones. Some claim the mountains or the forests. Or build fortresses on the plains. They begin to mistrust. And prepare for war. Still, I love them as only a mother can. And now I fear for them. Feel the winds of change begin to blow. And this time it may be an all-out storm. I pray that my children will weather this tempest. For nothing is immortal. And one day, they may have to survive without me. So as I was saying, the uh, first four games of E for... Well, shit, I didn't even... Two, three... I fucked it all up. Anyways, picked a random E game. It was Edna and Harvey. Would have been the pick. I've already LP'd that. Uh, and the next several games are Elder Scroll games. Uh, so I just started from the bottom of that. And we wound up with Endless Legend. I don't know anything about this game. I believe it's a turn-based strategy type of uh, Masters of Magic, Masters of Orion, Civilization, maybe? Tutorial, scenario, introducing the game basics. That's probably what we're going to do. That way, if it comes to fruition and we decide to do an LP on it, we can start right at the level one. Nothing will be spoiled. It looked cool. It had a lot of good reviews, so... Let's see what the fuck this is all about. <clears throat> Accustomed to a life in space, the Mezzeri came here to settle. Marooned with no ship, no fuel, and no technology to create either. They have no choice but to make the best of it on this strange world. Aruga! Whether they survived and thrive or go the way of the Endless can only be decided by the game order. Okay. So what? Now what? It's a tutorial. Why don't you fucking tell me where to click? Welcome to Endless Legend. This game introduction will guide you through the core elements you'll need to play this fucking game. In order to survive this dangerous ass world, you will have to build a mighty fucking empire and face powerful fucking foes. Your tale begins here with your first fucking army. It is looking for a good location to settle your first fucking city. Okay. Select your army by clicking on it. On the bottom left is your army panel. All armies are represented on the map by the strongest unit among those composing the army. It's my first Iron Legion. Your army is currently composed of only a single unit, a settler, represented by several pawns on a hexagon. The settler gives an army ability to found a city in a neutral region. A region that does not already contain a city. Your army can see a distance of three tiles from its position. You can also zoom in and out 
For a better overview, shaded tiles represent areas you have explored that are not in your field of vision. Beyond that, the gray fog of war hides mysteries, areas you have never seen. Armies share a few attributes. Life, tiny little Zelda heart, represents the sum of the health points of every unit in your army. Movement points determine how far your army can move in a turn. Movement points for an army with several units are determined by the unit with the lowest score. Vision determines how far your army can see on the map. Vision range for an army is determined by the unit with the highest score. It costs a movement point to traverse most terrain tiles. However, some tiles like forest can cost more. Each region has a fixed frontier and only can only contain one single city, which also exploits the region's terrain resources. Terrain resources are food, denoted by the little corn husk industry, which is the little gears and science, which is some little blue fucking symbol, I have no idea. And dust, which is a yellow circle. Looks like one of Lug Lug's nipples. To help you decide, you can toggle the display of the terrain resources on and off. And the button located in the bottom right, the end of the turn panel. Oh, I see. Right on. Holy shit, alright. Yeah, definitely a uh, sim type game. So I'm thinking Masters of uh, Magic. For most of the major factions, it's best to select a location for a city that gives access to these terrain resources on the surrounding exploration top. To find a city and colonize the region, select your army. And then click on the tile your army can reach. Okay, let's do this. Holy shit. Do right here. That looks good. Select your city by clicking on the city center or one of the six surrounding tiles that compose the exploitation area of the city. So I could click here and here and all these different places. Congratulations! Now you rule over an entire region. This is your city interface. Your city center plus six tiles surrounding it. The exploitation area. We we'll collect every turn their terrain resources. The city center, or the city district tile, automatically modifies its initial terrain income, providing more dust and science, but also a bit less food. City tiles also provide a unique resource called influence. A worker panel details all the city resources and your income. Per worker production, resources from tiles and potential modifiers, good or bad, all have an impact on the total production you can expect from your city in the next turn. You can mouse over these elements and see the tooltips for more details. You can move a worker from one column to another in order to determine which FIDC production you want to boost for the next turn. So, food... What was this? Industrial... Fitzy. They should it should be Fitz Fizz D. Because the D is here and the S is here. You guys fuck that up. You can move a worker from one column to another in order to determine okay. Oh I see. Food production cannot be stored. Excess food is automatically used each turn to produce additional city workers. The green part of the population growth bar shows that you're about to get an additional city worker next turn. Industry production also cannot be stored in your city, which should be used to construct new city improvements, units, or regional expansions. A city should always have something queued for construction, otherwise the industry resource for that turn will disappear one turn later. The list of available construction shows what can be built in your city. The city improvements founder memorial is available. City improvements are constructions giving different kinds of bonuses to your city. They can be built only once per city. Like many interface elements, you get more details about the Founder's Memorial by mousing over it and reading the tooltip in the available construction list. The construction at the top of the queue will use your city's industry production for X turns until it's built. As you can see, a certain number of turns will be required to build the Founder Memorial as it costs 60 industry. 
You'll need to develop your science to get an edge over the other empires. Science is aggregated at the empire level and used to research new technologies. Similar in industry, you must keep researching new technologies if you don't want to waste your science. Construction queue. Okay, we'll put it in there. From the main banner, open the research screen to learn more about research. The research screen is where you'll help your empire evolve through technology eras as you struggle toward a brighter future. Only the first six technology eras is currently accessible. Each era is represented by a circle regrouping a number of technologies. To enter a new era, you must research nine new technologies from the previous era. The order in which you do doesn't fucking matter. The cost in science automatically increases for each new technology research. In addition, researching a more advanced era also costs more science. Some technologies directly unlock new powers or bonuses for your empire, while other city improvement expansions or units that can be built in your cities. Blue circle technologies are already known. Green ones are unknown and several can be selected in a row. They will be researched one after the other. Food and industry technologies are usually a safe way to begin using your science. You can hover the mouse over each technology to learn its effects. Once selected, a technology will take a fixed number of turns, depending on your science production. Language Square, with a public square dedicated to practicing and teaching the many languages of Aruga! Conversations with minor factions can now move beyond pointing and grunting. That sounds fucking important. End your turn when you're ready by clicking in turn. <laughs> The population of Splat has grown to two. Thanks to your food production, the number of workers has increased. There are now two workers available in your worker panel. The Borough Streets, an expansion construction, can now be selected from the list of available construction expansions. Expansions must be directly placed on the map and can be built several times. For most major factions, every two additional city workers makes one new borough available for construction. The borough streets enables you to extend your city exploitation area by building a new city district next to an existing one. To key the borough streets construction, click X, or click left click, and then click on the exploitation area tiles next to the city center. Well done! Like any other queued construction, your new city district will be functional only once construction is complete. Keep in mind that both spreading your cities too widely or settling new cities causes your city approval to decrease, impacting your food and industry. We got plus 60 from approval and an extra 5 from the palace. Don't forget that you have a world to explore. Scouting with armies will be your best way to discover the unknown. To create new units and explore the area, you must create unit designs. The unit marine has a unit design in the list of available constructions. Add two copies of the unit design marine to the construction queue. The two units are queued, but several turns are required to build them. Dust, the most precious resource on Aruga, hasn't been introduced yet. It is stored at the Empire level and can also be exploited by your cities. Each turn, city improvements already built and cost a small amount of dust for their upkeep. The total upkeep for your city improvements is summed up here. 
Note that you'll be able to use the browse button to see the cost details. Dust can also be used to directly buy out queued construction in order to get them built in the next turn. Note that you can scroll in the list of queued constructions as well as drag. Yeah, we're scrolling. Drag and drop them to change their priority. Click the buyout button of the two designs in queue. I have four in the queue because I'm fucking getting it. That's only 71. Buying it all out. Little do you know. Construction complete. Once a unit is constructed, it is placed in the city garrison. Like other constructions, each unit created consumes a bit of dust for its upkeep. The grayed out units in the garrison are your city militia. They cannot leave the garrison unless the city is under attack. Garrison units, including the militia, are always the last bastion that remains to defend a city against an attack. Your current max garrison capacity is two units. This capacity is the same for all cities and armies within your empire. This max capacity doesn't include the militia, and it can be increased by unlocking new technologies. You can create new armies from the garrison. Select two units, or click on the select all button, and then click new army button. Congratulations! You now have a new army that you can send to explore the surrounding regions. However, you need to limit the number of armies as they also have an upkeep cost. that must be paid each turn, just like the upkeep for each unit. Aruga has many runes to search. Any of them can provide you with rewards. So if you find one, you should try your luck. Rune tiles that can be searched on the map are shiny. It's now up to you to decide when to end your turns. Remember to check out your city construction queues as well as the research queue and army movement before ending turns. When exploring with your army, white dots indicate the army path for this turn, and the yellow ones for those following turns. You can maintain right-click while mousing over the map to simulate your path. Your army will move once you release the mouse button. Select your army and right-click on the map to move it and look for some rooms. End your turn when they have no movement points left. Right, oh, here's Splat. Legion of Splat. Okay, that's a die deposit. Steel stalks. And blacksmith's delight. These unusual plants draw heavy metals into bulbous pots ripe for plucking. Temple runes.
When standing next to a rune, select your army, then right click on the rune to select and search or use button. Search party or sewer system to drop in nauseating odors and infectious diseases thanks to the new public sanitation system. Instantly gives approval bonus. Yeah, we need some sewers. No doubt. You have found nothing of interest. Wow, that's fucking awesome. Runes can give you unexpected rewards, or nothing. As you play, you'll discover different ways to increase your chances of getting a reward when you search a rune. Runes may also give you quests to complete, which will provide additional rewards. To explore more rapidly, you may want to split your army by selecting one or several of the units and right-clicking on your map. You can also use the split army action once the units are selected. In a similar way, you can choose Merge Two Armies by selecting one army, then right-clicking the other one beside it. You can also merge Army Action button when two armies are standing next to each other. As movement, note the splitting and merging costs. Movement points to splitting, merging units. Time for you to make contact with the native minor faction living in your region. Minor factions are hostile. This is only one minor faction per region, living in one to three villages. Villages contain units for their defense, but they may also spawn roaming armies that could attack your armies or cities. Use the parlay army action on one of the villages. The village will give you a pacification quest. By completing it, all the villages in the region will instantly be pacified and will no longer create hostile armies. When standing next to a village with your army, select right-click and parlay with those motherfuckers. You've encountered a new minor faction, the Sisters of Mercy. A small but respected nation, living simply through well in their solidly constructed towns. A recent offshoot of other humanoid peoples, they are content to dedicate their efforts to giving mercy where and how they deem it is most needed. I like the boobies. So we get this kick ass Justice Seer Mantle. Plus five health regen per pacified and rebuilt sister's village on Empire. Okay, yep, I know exactly what that means. So let's uh, parlay. The tribe leader needs your help. A hostile monster has been raiding and threatening their villages, and they lack the military power to stop them. If you wipe out the threat, the tribe will view you as their savior. Five die as a reward. You can hover the cursor over the quest objectives to get more details about their completion. A ray of dust shows the exact location on your map. You can also use the pin button to track a quest. It will then be displayed at the top right of the screen as a reminder. There's a lot of shit to this game. Holy fuck. Search the runes with an army of at least two units. Quest marker indicates the specific runes you have to go to and search for the quest. The location will be even visible through Fog of War. Please note that for other quests, 
markers may only be visible within the vision range of your armor. Complete the Sister of Mercy quest in order to pacify all villagers in this punk-ass region. This is pretty cool. Definitely a little bit of a learning curve like all, most of these games, but I like this. Nice crisp graphics. The zoom level is pretty dope. Pacify the Sisters of Mercy and Splat help the hapless neighbors against the depredations of the monster. You found it. Survive the battle if possible, but more importantly, make sure the monster is killed. You can now attack the army. Oh, cool. We get to see our first monster. Big ogre. You're about to launch in a battle against an army. Here's your encounter paddle. Note the battle take place directly on the terrain of the adventure map. Depending on the balance of power in the terrain of battleground, you may prefer to play a, play a simulated battle in auto, where the unit movement and attacks are handled by the computer. The default army strategy can also be selected. In manual battles, you'll be able to set it more precisely unit by unit. Ready to fight? Okay. Welcome to the battleground. During deployment phase, your units spread out from the army's leader position across the tile, shaded the color of your empire. Your opponent's army does the same thing on its tiles. The battleground is limited by the white border. All units start by taking their default position. Your opponent unit positions are only an estimation and are likely to change when the battle begins. During a battle, note that you can always click in and out of the battleground if you want to manage your cities or give orders to other armies at the same time. Select one of the units from your side of the battleground. All unit information is listed in the unit panel, class, attributes, capacity, status effects, level, and strategy. The unit class, infantry, cavalry, range, flying, or support determines the way a unit can move and attack on the battleground. Life is amongst the is the amount of damage the unit can sustain. Attack determines your ability to inflict damage. Defense reduces the amount of ass kicking you get. Initiative helps your unit strike first in battle. And damage determines the hit score of a successful attack. Speed determines the number of tiles the unit can move. Attributes can also be impacted by other factors. Relative, position, altitude, and terrain. When next to a friendly unit, morale is increasing, increasing the attack and defense. Elevation units can also increase their attack when attacking from a higher position. Forest tiles increase unit defense, and city tiles increase morale. Capacities are special abilities automatically used by units when attacking or being attacked. The range capacity, for example, gives the maximum distance from where a unit can attack. You can use the mouse over the capacities to get more details from the tooltips. Attack range of three tiles. Minus one morale per adjacent enemy. Techno lover. The deployment phase enables you to change the position of units. Selecting with the right click on your tile.
Assign targeting orders. You have entered the first targeting phase of battle. You can now decide how your units will perform their actions for the first round of the fight. Each unit will move and attack each round. The initiative bar shows the order in which the units will play during the resolution phase. Depending on their initiative attribute, note that if a unit is attacked, it will automatically counterattack using its action prematurely for the round. For each unit, you can also choose between one of three strategies. For default targeting behavior, aggressive and cautious will set more or less aggressive targeting. While hold position will order your unit to stay where it is and attack only when something's within range. In addition, you can manually select a destination or a target unit. Your unit will then try to focus on it during the resolution phase. Note that you can even select a position and then select a target to have more control. Select a unit and then right click on a tile or enemy you don't want to target. This is a rumbler. Battles last six round maximum. Each new round, new targeting phase begins so you can tweak or adapt your strategies. Finish your enemy. The outcome of this battle is up to you. No, I want you to move the fucking window so I can goddamn see the action, you stupid twat. Congratulations, you won your first battle. The troubadours prepare their songs. Whatever the result, surviving units always earn experience from the enemies killed. Earned experience are equally shared between units. Draw situations can also occur with the survivors on both sides. In that case, another battle can be launched if the army still has remaining action points. First stone phal phalanx. No hero. Now you can see the effects of pacification. Three village workers have joined your city from the three pacified villages. Ooh. Pacification is also possible village by village if you attack each of them. However, in that case, you would then need to rebuild each village to obtain these additional workers. The Empire screen is a global dashboard that lets you review your Empire status and take critical Empire-wide decisions. You receive some luxury resources as a quest reward. There are 15 different kinds of luxury resources to discover on Aruga, each of them granting specific bonuses to your Empire. Once used, luxury resources stay active for the number of turns indicated in their tooltip. The more regions you have, the more expensive luxury boosters will be. Each major faction has its own affinity and traits, with powers and bonuses specific to them. Here you will find all the Empire bonuses currently applied on your Empire. Every 20 turns, all the Empires can set, at the same time, an Empire plan. By spending influence, you can unlock various powerful bonuses that will affect your Empire until the next Empire plan. By opening the status screen, you can, uh, are able to view or review your progress with other Empires. The screen also gives you more info about the different kinds of victories you can achieve if your mouse if you mouse over the explanations display scores of competing empires victory achievements you can also decide to spend influence to assimilate minor factions assimilation will give you the useful new bonuses of the unit design of the minor faction as long as the minor faction stays assimilated to simulate a minor faction, at least one of the villages must be pacified within your empire. Remember, you recently pacified villages in your region. Left click on a simulation slot in the empire screen.
Well done. The Sisters of Mercy's Minor Faction now gives you plus 15 health regeneration in your regions. And their unit design is now available to be built in your cities. For now, you don't have enough die luxury resource to activate its effects by clicking on its booster. Go back to the city menu to find out more about luxury extractors. A die deposit was discovered in your region. Yeah, it's up here, right? The die extractor. This expansion type constructions are built directly on the adventure map. Well done. Note that strategic resources can also be collected by building extractors if your region contains the corresponding deposits. Remember that, like most constructions, extractors normally require specific technologies that need to be researched in different areas. They are then available for construction in your regions. You can improve your units by creating new unit designs using the strategic resource you have collected. You currently have a small amount of titanium. Titty. Titanium. Military screen lists all your armies, their individual units, and cost and upkeep. Note that you'll be able to double click an army to locate it on the map. In addition, the military screen <clears throat> is also where you edit existing unit designs and create new ones. Here you can edit unit designs that will then become available in the list of possible constructions in your cities. Holy shit. This is fucking super in-depth. Depending on the unit, you can add different weapons, armor, and accessories to your design. These will improve the unit's attributes or even give them new capacities. This unit, for instance, can give you plus 10% to all blowjobs given. As you can see with Tier 1 Titanium items of armory, some items also require strategic resources to be spent when the unit is constructed. Items made of strategic resources as well as advanced weapons and armor tiers will unlock as you advance through the technology arrows. Once you're happy with your design, enter a name and left click on validate. You can end your turn when you're ready. We want all that shit, right? Improve movement. Glory or death, of course we want that. The design name cannot be in D. This unit is known as Game Hoarder's Hose. Validated. As you can see with the Tier 1 Titanium items of Armory, some items also require... Yeah, we did that. Now it's time to learn more about heroes, very special and powerful units. This is the academy screen where all the heroes of your empire will be listed. Unlike standard units, heroes can get injured but cannot be killed on the battleground. To be of use, a hero is assigned to an army as a general or as a city as a governor. Depending on their profile and their hero skills, they will give different bonuses to the army or city. Unlike standard units, heroes can instantly equip new items as long as they are in the academy or located within your territory. You can immediately spend the resources required to change their equipment. So we need to hook this bitch up, obviously. Hmm. 
Yeah, we want that. At each level, your heroes will earn one additional skill point to spend on their skills. Hero XP can be earned through battles. Like any unit, but also through constructions as a governor or through the use of some army actions as an army general. In normal games, more advanced features will be revealed through the unlock of new technologies or by dealing with other empires. The marketplace is one of these, and it gives you, among other things, the possibility to, re to recruit new heroes for your empire. You can now assign your first hero to an army or city. Once assigned, a defined number of turns must pass before the hero can be reassigned. Note the hero assignment can also be performed directly from a city or an army. This covers the basics you need to know to play Endless Legend. End your turn when you are ready to finish the tutorial and lead your motherfucking empire. Ooh, I got an achievement. I got two achievements. Congratulations! You have now learned the basics and are ready to start exploring Endless Fucking Legend and Aruga! It's actually Auriga. Auriga? I like Aruga! Many other subtleties and features are waiting for you, especially with all the different major faction gameplay elements to discover. Get ready to battle against other empires sharing the world of Aruga! And good luck. Alright, well we got 17 minutes. Let's get started. Holy shit. New game. We're just going to start with six motherfuckers. Generation pre presets. Empire summary. Oh, okay. Here we have our different empires. We have our forest elf wild walkers. We have our broken lords. Those dudes are fucking dope. The Volteers. The Volters. We're not going to get into the description. But you can see their their main victory type. Wonder, Expansion, Science, the Mazari, Science, Elimination, the Necrophages. Those guys are dope. Insectoid little Necromancer dudes. It's the Arden Mages. Roving Clans. And the Draken. Diplomatic. We also have not available. This additional is not enabled in the content management screen. So we have Kapuku, Morguar, Aliyai, and the Forgotten. I guess you can create your own, obviously. Well, you know I'm going to peck the necrophages in the main game if we LP this, so... <laughs> Let's go with the Broken Lords. shape became the land. The land became rich and all of that is me. Aruga. Aruga. Loading terrain type motherfuckers. Loading anomalies. Loading routes and shit. Loading motherfucking instancing mesh and shit. About to get jiggy with it. Clearing unused fucking memory and waiting for other empires to hurry the fuck up. We were different once. Oh, we a little fought, intro. Drank and loved as mortal beings. But our world changed and we faced a stark choice. Alter our bodies or perish. Yet survival is not the same as life. Now we are prisoners of the armor that binds us and the dust that sustains us. We must drain dust, drain energy, or die. Where is our honor now, Lords of the Amber Plains? And what matters more, 
to reclaim our honor or sustain our bodies. Yeah, this shit's pretty dope. This is gonna have to go on the list, I think. Uh, especially because there's fucking minotaurs. These large, small, slow-moving herbivores retain some vestiges of their less intelligent ancestors. Though they are often on four legs, freeing and resting. They rise up on two for observation and using tools. Minotaur Calvary, plus five life. Weaver worms, giant silkworms furrow these ice sheets, leaving behind great roads of magical thread. As well as being incredibly strong, the silks can be woven into fabulous fabrics. Well, I'm just gonna... Get shit going. Check out our little region here. Salting the earth. Whether the result of impetuous colonization decision or an impending attack, sometimes everything in a city must be destroyed and the population removed. We'll get started on that. Let's see all the other colors down here we have. Our game menu. You've encountered a new minor faction. Seraton. Oh, Thry Thrycreen. Click clack. The Seraton are the best described as arachnoid centaurs. They are a subterranean people tending to white hair and pale skin. They prefer to feed on a warm blooded prey, but can survive on cold blooded beasts or insectoids. Kind of like driders. Oh, yeah, never mind. It is a fucking drider. Alrighty then. Ten spices. Definitely added a lot of uh, different elements to this. Very intriguing. I love how everything kind of has a different look and feel. We have Baron Jocelyn Dival the Third. It comes with a whole bunch of flavor text. Definitely need that ring. And that necklace too. Escort a broken lord's hero with at least three infantry. The quakes and fires appear to be over. We lost the city and are now homeless. But we are strong and remain unbound. The first step was to secure our new home, to found a city, build an army, and explore ancient places. For our experience tells us this. It tells us nothing else. 
The ancient ruins scattered across the map are places of great knowledge, great wealth, and great danger. For all of those reasons, we must explore and exploit them. With caution, however, any place of great value will be guarded by creatures of great strength. We must not forget this exploration. It will also take the mind off of our condition and this new method of dealing with it. Dust is expensive and difficult to exploit, but this new way, this draining of living souls to sustain our forms, it goes against who we are. It violates our principles, our honor. It is everything we have been fighting against, and yet it is easy. Build an army and explore the area around your city. Carefully explore runes. I was going to make some friends over here. Fuck it. I'm going to attack it. I'm ready to fight. Fucked up, Minotaur. Goes the soul. Pussy. He's retreating. It's cool that they'll, if they can't get to their target, they'll automatically attack, attack the next closest thing. You guys can make it though. Yeah, uh, you could have went to these guys. He go, oh, shit. AI seems 
pretty good so far. They're trying to get in advantageous positions and forcing our army units to move around. Instead of just standing in the same place and being surrounded. So the militia came out, which was cool, because those guys were so close to the city. Looks like we're rebuilding that city now. Escort a Broken Lord's hero with at least three infantry units to expect the unspoiled runes. That is them. But we need more infantry units, so we're going to need to build infantry as well. Cannot afford the 169 needing to buy it out. Oh yeah, we want that Broken Lord's Cavalry unit. That's going to take three turns, however. Encountered a minor faction, the boss. Boss are centaurs who live in herding groups. They are nomad warriors, relatively simple and uneducated, wearing little clothing. They are less well adapted to cold climates, but still roam far and wide across Aruba. And we have some boss centaurs there, and some seratan here. That didn't do the quest because it looks like I needed another infantry unit. Anyways. There's obviously a lot more to this game to see and to experience, but I think this shows enough of whether or not this is something you guys would all like to see done as a let's play. So, let me know. Maybe some of you have actually played this and you know that it actually ends up sucking and gets redundant. I don't know. Just let me know in the comments. To the LP vote list or to the ghetto. Thanks for watching.